Hello and welcome to Blossom Sandwich Sews. My name is Yvette and today I'm joining you from my festive little sewing corner to bring you an update with all the things that I have been up to lately. So I haven't been doing a huge amount of sewing lately. Uh, one of the things that I have been working on is um, sewing up uh, reusable drawstring bags to use as gift, um, reusable, sustainable gift wrapping uh, for the presents for Christmas. So I've pretty much finished all of those, um, sewing them up. So that's um, quite good and quite nice that um, it's like a handmade element to um, the gifts I'm giving as well because I um, haven't actually made any like, ha you know, fully handmade gifts. Um, because I just didn't have the time or the energy to do that this year um, but it's quite nice that I'm able to still uh, have a little bit of a handmade element in the gifts. I'm not going to show you them because um, I haven't given out my gifts yet so I don't want any spoilers um, but it's quite easy to make like little drawstring bags and it's a good scrap buster as well. Um, so some of the fabric that I used was leftover fabric from my Christmas dress that I made last year. Uh, so I wore my Christmas dress to the uh, the work Christmas do this year so that was quite fun to actually uh, have an outing for it this year um, so yeah in lieu of uh, actually being able to talk to you about much sewing uh, I've got a few things to show you um, so I have bought some more fabric lately even though I always say that I'm not gonna buy any more but shh it was the sale um, so one of the things that I bought was this um, stretch denim type of fabric from um, Rainbow Fabrics so this is the first uh, purchase that I've actually ever made from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, I always like check out their drops, but often things go uh, so quickly when they're released. Um, but this was in um, their Black Friday sale, and it was down to about like five pounds thirty a metre, so a real bargain. Um, and it was listed as a River Island dead stock heavy chambray, um, but it's kind of it's quite weighty. It's like a um, like a denim and it's got quite a decent amount of stretch to it as well so I'm definitely going to use these to make some bottoms, some trousers and um, so I just need to decide whether I'm going to make the Helen's Closet Arden pants or another pair of the Danny pants that I made in my red fabric and um, so let me know what you think would be um, good to make with this um, but yeah it's quite you know quite sturdy for bottoms so I think this will be perfect um, and I've really gone off wearing jeans um, lately because I just don't find them comfortable anymore but then it means that I don't get to wear any of my tops that I've made so um, I think this will be definitely a good wardrobe staple so hopefully I'll get that um, sewn up uh, you never know do you when you buy a fabric you've always got strong motivation when it arrives and then uh, more uh, ideas get in your way and then um, and another um, wardrobe staple uh, which probably isn't going to show up well on camera because it's um, black is this though I ordered this from the new craft house and it's the same uh, black viscose KD that I used to make my um, 70s pattern uh, James Bond inspired dress um, and I want to make some like uh, Winslow collots but like a shorter version like maybe just above the knee so it looks like a sort of black um, like A-line type skirt but it's the culottes um, and I think that will be really wearable like day to day um, I used to have like a, just a plain black skirt that I would wear all the time and that's quite like quite smart but it goes with a lot of things um, and also it will be comfy as well um, so yeah I think this might be one of the first fabric that I've ordered like more of the same fabric to make a different thing um, like I have ordered you know more of the same fabric when I've run out halfway through a project or like you know I just didn't order enough in the first place but yeah I really really like this fabric and I would recommend it um, if you're looking for a more like slightly weightier like more luxurious feeling viscose because it's really really soft as well um, so yeah that this I would really recommend and they have it in a few colours as well and then the other thing that I uh, ordered from the new craft house is uh, less of a wardrobe staple and more of a, uh, a very uh, crazy fabric um, so this is a cotton with this like shiny uh, like foil coating on the top um, so it's an ex designer dead stock like all of the new craft house fabrics so it's like bright blue on the back and then uh, sort of purple and 
very metallic on the front so I'm gonna make a, um, a sort of big puff sleeved smock dress in this so it's very creased because I've like just pre-washed it like today um, so yeah I will uh, test a swatch to see how well it takes pressing um, I might need to be careful with it because I'm not sure what the coating is made of but it, it did uh, survive the washing machine fine I did pre-wash a swatch as well uh, which I don't normally do but I was uh, feeling cautious with this fabric um, but I've got um, inspiration uh, of what to make with this from a dress by the designer by Megan Crosby uh, so I'll put in a picture of that dress um, so it's like a pretty sort of popular standard at the moment of the puff sleeved smock dress so I might steal the um, idea that Hazel and the Machine and Ellen the Stitches have both done where they've done a um, Tilly the Buttons indigo like bodice and skirt and then they've added the big Anthea sleeve because it's got a lot more volume so if I've got enough fabric that is what I'm thinking of making with this um, so yeah this is not going to be a wardrobe staple this is going to be like a wild alien princess type look um, but I'm quite excited for that so hopefully I can sew that at the weekend and hopefully I manage to not get Omicron before Christmas and I can actually wear it but we'll see um, you, you never know at the moment but yeah this is um, just fabulous and the, it's, the fabric is lighter weight than I thought it was going to be as well so I think it's just going to gather so nicely and really like show off the the shininess of this fabric um, so the other thing that I was thinking of telling you about in today's video was a, a trip that I went on. So it was my mum's birthday recently um, and for her birthday uh, treat I took her to the studio where they make the costumes for uh, BBC Strictly Come Dancing. Um, so if you're not from the UK you'll probably know the show as Dancing with the Stars. Um, but they, there's a studio in Croydon in South London where they make all of the, um, the dresses that the female contestants and celebrities wear and they do some of the men's as well but apparently sometimes they just buy in like shirts and stuff from the high street for men's which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so yeah it was really amazing to see and like hear about how the process works and stuff so they really don't have long at all to like turn around the um the dresses because they make them week to week um because they don't know who's going to still be in and what dance they're going to be doing next so um the the show is filmed um on a saturday night and then the, then on so then on sunday vicky gill who is the costume designer she will design all the costumes and then she'll send the sketches to uh, DSI, which is the name of the studio where they make the dresses. And then they will get those on well, maybe like late Monday or Tuesday. And then they'll have to fully finish all of the dresses by Friday morning to get them to the BBC for the dress rehearsal on Friday. Um, so yeah, they've got really quite a tight turnaround. Uh, and it was quite interesting just to hear like little uh, tricks about how they do it and everything. So like um, they will take measurements of the all the participants and then they will um, get mannequins which they'll pad with bubble wrap to um, make it the right shape for each contestant. And then they will like um, often the contest like the celebrities will end up changing shape through the course of the competition because of all the dancing being quite uh, a lot of physical exercise. So they will then have to like remeasure them and like slightly unwrap a bit of the bubble wrap they've added to the waist and things, which I thought was quite interesting. And all of the dresses, like even the like uh, ball um, ballroom dancing like gowns, will be um, sewn on top of a leotard so the, the leotard will like take the weight of the dress and it's not just like all on your shoulders or all like um, the weight just like coming off your hips of the skirt which I thought was quite interesting because they said that people who um, are not professional dancers and are not used to like dancing in a big dress can actually be like knocked off their feet by the like um, having such a big skirt swishing around them at like quite good speed so I thought that was quite surprising um, but yeah they're all done on top of a leotard and then um, they were surprisingly heavy actually some of the um, the dresses that I was able to like hold on the hanger um, because a lot of them are very if you've seen the show you'll know they're very um, 
bedazzled with lots of rhinestones all over them so um there was one uh, dress which was just basically just like a bodice and then sort of a little bit of fringing for a skirt like a latin um style dress and um they that was probably like i don't know at least like one or two kilos just the dress because it was fully covered in rhinestones and they said a dress like that, like covered in old stones, would probably cost around £5,000 if you wanted to buy it. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> I'm going to hand this back now in case it gets broken while I'm holding it. Um, but yeah, you can, when they, they took us as part of the tour, they took us like around the studio with them actually making the dresses. And um, there's like one man who just like glues every rhinestone on like one by one, like by hand. And it was just like insane, like you can tell, you can, you know, like the amount of work that goes in to every dress and they, then the short amount of time they have to make them as well was just like really incredible, like the work that they're able to do. Um, and they said like with the, because one of the things like that I was sort of not concerned, but like wondered about is what happens to the dresses after the Strictly show is on the TV. Um, because I was like, there's so much work that goes into them and obviously like a lot of, you know, people's time and just money with like all of the materials and everything. Like what happens to them after the show? Like I hope they don't just sit in a warehouse or like, you know, sit in someone's closet forever. But uh, the way that the business is set up is that they will make the dresses for um, the BBC dancing show. And, but the BBC... Uh, only hires the dresses and so then DSI will get the dresses back after the show, wash them in the washing machine, which I thought was pretty wild, and then they can rehire the same dresses for like um, the Strictly tour or um, hire them out for Dancing with the Stars in other countries or they can use them on um, dancing cruises or um, professional um, dancers can hire the same dresses for their competition so the dresses do get a lot of use which I thought was reassuring because um, you know I feel like a lot of people have become much more aware of like fashion wastage lately and I think especially something that's been like handmade like really really uh, you know intense amount of work's gone into it the thought of just it sitting around and not being used I thought was horrifying so the um yeah, just to be able to know that those dresses do get um, used again was really reassuring. And then um, we saw all of the like fabric that they have um, at DSI and like one of the, so my dad came as well. And one of the questions he asked was like, so when Vicky designs the costumes, does she just assume that you have like an unlimited amount of like any type of fabric in any colour so you'll just be able to like manufacture anything that she designs and the um the lady running the tour was like yeah well well we do like we do have basically an infinite amount of all the fabric we could ever need like there there were so many rooms with their like fabric stash and it was just like really incredible um and they have a lot of fabric you know like technical fabrics like stretch lace and um you know the mesh and everything um, so yeah, I would, if you are like in the area of South London, I would recommend um, looking up DSI London. They do tours on uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays um, and it's just really interesting, um, especially if you're interested in, um, in dressmaking and the construction sort of side of things. Um, it was really interesting to be able to see, you know, how they constructed these um, these dresses that you see on TV. Um, so I'll put in a few pictures that I took while I was there. They were quite relaxed about letting us take photos, um, which was really good. And yeah, they do, they sell their fabric as well. So if you wanted to like make your own strictly inspired gown, you could buy the fabric, but some of it is quite pricey. It's like 50 pounds a meter. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it was really, really interesting to see. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that. I'll put in a link in the description box below. And then um, the other things that I wanted to show you were some uh, presents that I've received. So it is uh, obviously Christmas coming up. So one of the Christmas uh, presents that I got from my work secret Santa was this little kit. It was this uh, crochet kit to crochet Star Wars characters. So you can see, look how cute they all are. There's little Yoda being shorter than everyone else. There we go. 
so let me know who's your favourite Star Wars character that you'd like to crochet. Um, so the kit comes with a book with the instructions on how to crochet all the characters, but in the, um, the materials you get are to make the Luke and the Darth Vader. But look at the Darth Vader's little beady eyes, isn't he so cute? <laughs> but um, yeah, so they're like a finger puppet. So, and I, yeah, so I, I'm going to need to learn how to crochet now. So that will be, um, that will be fun. But yeah, if you've got any experience with crocheting, let me know uh, if you've got any good tips or recommendations for uh, resources on uh, how to learn how to crochet. Um, but yeah, that's really cute and I'm kind of quite excited to try a new craft. And then another new crafting kit that I've got is an early birthday present from my brother and um, so, so it's my birthday next week and my brother's bought me this uh, macrame kit if that's how you say it um, which is uh, where you um, you use like knots to create a uh, pattern so the kit gives you uh, the materials to make this tree of life in a hoop um, so this is another craft that I haven't tried myself before so this will be um, fun to try as well. So I was um, very suspicious that my brother's girlfriend had had a hand in choosing this gift so I asked him and he was like no I've chosen it all myself. Um, so yeah I was pleased with that. I thought that's quite a, um, a nice gift as well. And then um, a gift that I got from my uh, granddad was was some spool pods from Pattern Trace. So look how satisfying they are. I've already uh, put my uh, threads in in like kind of a colour order and then I've got another spare one as well uh, so before they were all just like chucked in a tin and I was using elastic bands to hold the um, the bobbins and the thread together um, but yeah I just really like that you're able to store the bobbin and the thread um, next to each other because if you've got like threads that are kind of a similar colour it can be a bit of a pain to like find the bobbin that matches so having them just like kept together is so organised and then you can see as well which, which ones you've got the threads but you haven't um, got the bobbins ready yet. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a good step for my, uh, my uh, organisation. So yeah, that's, um, that's all I've really got to say today. I was just going to do a little catch up because um, yeah, I've just really been struggling to find the time to film videos, but hopefully before the end of the year, I'll be able to film a video that's like a summary of everything that I've sewn this year, um, because I, I think that it will be quite uh, fun to look back on everything that I've made, because sometimes I feel like I'm not being very productive, like at the moment. Um, but it's, you know, I need to sort of bear in mind that sewing is like, like for fun and it's, I'm not under pressure to uh, have a great output. It's more like, you know, to it to be enjoyed. Um, so I think going and looking through like, uh, you know, a big pile of all the stuff I've actually made will, uh, you know, help me appreciate how much uh, progress I've actually made on my sewing and how many things I've produced. And another thing I want to think about is a make nine for next year because um, I want to try and do a make nine but only with fabrics and patterns that I already own so that I can, uh, you know, sew up some projects that I've been, you know, excited about doing but then just like haven't managed to get round to it. So I, if I actually have them on my list, maybe that will motivate me to actually sew them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and whistle down to nine projects and then maybe I'll do like a sew along for each of my make nine uh, you know, ideas so that I've, uh, you know, actually held to account to sew them. Uh, so yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and uh, let me know how organised you're feeling with Christmas, if you've got all your presents yet or if you're still going to do some last minute crafting to get your presents ready. And yeah, hopefully see you soon. Bye!